begin. Fear no more. Susie Orman's Ultimate Retirement Guide. Tuesday evening at 8.30. You fill up my senses. He's one of the most successful and best loved recording artists of the 20th century. Relive the music and memories with John Denver, Country Roads, live in England. Join us on this PBS station. Thursday, March 11th. On her first trip to the American West, Evelyn Cameron fell in love. I consider a hunting expedition one of the most desirable ways for a couple to spend a holiday. She fell in love with the thrill of big game hunting in Montana. She fell in love with the hard work and sacrifice of pioneer life. And she fell in love with a landscape that would soon become her home. What lovely, pure, exhilarating air this is in Montana. Evelyn Cameron looked through a lens to help make sense of this new place. She left a legacy of photographs unique in their content. Her artistic eye and spectacular attention to detail created images of unusual landscapes. Her endless curiosity pushed her to focus on the working people of the prairie. Each and every day, for 35 years, she wrote of her successes and failures in her diaries. She began her journey with one simple goal. I wish I could lead a life worthy to look back upon. Production support for Evelyn Cameron was provided by Travel Montana, the Montana Cultural Trust, the Greater Montana Foundation, and the Montana Committee for the Humanities. Among the green rolling hills of English countryside, Evelyn Jeffson Flower was born in 1868 on an estate near the small town of Streatham, just south of London. Fursdown Park held all the amenities of upper middle class living. Evelyn's father, who died when she was four years old, was a wealthy merchant dealing in trade with East India. Evelyn's mother composed music and loved to play piano in the elegant drawing rooms of the house. The family money supported a full staff of servants. Evelyn never had to do chores. In fact, one servant had the special job of brushing Evelyn's hair. She had come from a culture where everyone just waited for someone to take care of them, including her whole family, her brothers who sat around doing nothing. I mean, they were investing in gold mines in South Africa and losing their shirts, and, but basically doing nothing. Evelyn wanted more. She wanted adventure. While other girls attended dances and parties, Evelyn would sneak off with her brothers and go hunting for rabbits and grouse. She was not the typical Victorian young lady. A life of tea parties and sewing, no, I don't think that was ever <laughs> on the cards for her. You can see that she was a fish out of water in middle-class English society. At the same time, there was a man who lived on a virtually uninhabited island off the northern coast of Scotland, where he studied the seabirds. He grew up in Barkeldean Castle, but his family had long since lost their money. 
Ewan Cameron barely made enough to support himself, let alone a wife. He simply loved living the life of a naturalist. What they were first attracted to each other because of their intellectual interests. I think that Evelyn was very attracted to the fact that he was a serious person and he had a passion. His passion was for the bird life, studying the bird life. And this fascinated Evelyn. And this, this seriousness of his purpose, I think, really appealed to her. It was unclear how Evelyn and Ewan met, but it was clear that Evelyn's family did not like him. He had no inheritance, no established career, and he was 14 years older than Evelyn. Evelyn had a choice, keep with tradition and marry a socially acceptable man, or break with tradition and choose Ewan. And obviously choosing Ewan was, you might say, either her first mistake or the first great thing that she did because this freed her from all the boundaries. She was no longer restricted by the social rules that prevailed because she'd made this incredible choice. And not only did she make this choice, but then they went off, set off to the other side of the world and started a whole new kind of life. The appeal of Montana to somebody of her tastes and her, her romantic sense too. I mean, I think marrying Ewan um, was a romantic gesture towards the wild. The Camerons were following in the footsteps of other wandering Britons who traveled to remote locations in the American West. The Brits came for the hunting, potential riches, and a fresh start. The Camerons had all three in mind when they settled in a small town just east of Miles City, Montana, along the Yellowstone River. The town of Terry was spawned by the work crews of the Northern Pacific Railroad. The new land seemed to have everything the Camerons needed. The prairie grass was abundant, and it was free. Horse prices were cheap. They planned to start a business raising polo ponies and exporting them to England. Evelyn Cameron, who had never performed a chore in her life, was ready to jump right in and start her future out west. They dubbed the place Eve Ranch. The house was tiny compared to the family estate in England, but it was still a daunting challenge for Evelyn. Luckily, there were nearby ranchers, like Mrs. Kempton, who educated Evelyn about the daily routine of chores. And so, in a way, Evelyn was initiated into this land by other women who were helping her, and she admired their, their knowledge. I mean, one thing about Evelyn is that she loved competent people, and she did not like incompetent people. She did not suffer for fools gladly. This was a woman, you, you had to know what you were doing. And that was one of the things I think that she loved about the West, is that people were self-sufficient. Manual labor is all I care about. It is what will really make a strong woman. I have no servant and do all my own housework and infinitely prefer doing it and being independent of hired help. There's nothing like work to make one contented, is there? In fact, there's no lack of employment at any time in this Western life. June 18th, three and one quarter pounds. Took 35 minutes. June 29th. Evelyn quickly developed her own system for running the ranch. She kept detailed notes in her diaries about anything pertaining to her work, including how much butter she churned and how long it took. July 5th, three pounds. Took one hour, 15 minutes. Obsessive is the word. Obsessive diarist, that's what Evelyn was. She recorded everything. She filled each page with daily events, and when she ran out of room, she doubled back to the top of the page and wrote between the lines. 
In the back of her diaries, Evelyn copied each letter she received and each letter she wrote during the year. Her meticulous notes helped her make sense of her ranch routine. From year to year, she would track the food she bought, the poultry she sold, and the prices for beef and butter. It was a scientific record for her, as well as an emotional ballast for her, keeping her grounded as to where she was and what she was doing, and it gave her a sense of progress. But progress was slow and the Camerons were in debt. Evelyn tried all the traditional means to raise extra money. She took in boarders, sold poultry and eggs, and tended a huge garden to sell the produce. This is a big thing about women's work. All of that is uncounted labor. It's so common that nobody really thinks about it. It's one of those things that just disappears because every woman does it. On a good day, Evelyn could make more than $5, double what the cowboys on the open range were making. Still, it wasn't enough. As another long day ended, Evelyn wrote in her diary, just as she did every night. She knew they were falling deeper in debt. To leave here without having made any money out of the ranch, after all our slaving and self-sacrifice, would be a severe blow. Evelyn was starting to have doubts about where her new life was heading. I wish I could lead a life worthy to look back upon. I am far out of the path now. Evelyn continued to struggle with the ranch and received little help from Ewan. He considered himself more a naturalist than a rancher and spent his days observing bird behavior and checking nests. Meanwhile, Evelyn was left to start breaking the horses. Local cowboys had their way and she had her own way. Intensely practical, Evelyn combined two chores into one. They were frightened of the clothes on the washing line. Therefore, I made them go round and round the length of the line. I had a hard battle with one, but finally got her so she let the clothes flap all around her. All those cowboy stereotypes are so masculine that when someone like Evelyn develops a little reputation for breaking horses, or when her neighbors, the Buckley sisters, are in there actually doing the cowboying themselves, they really are regarded as exceptional. That's not probably not true either. Any woman on a ranch has to be able to do at least some of the chores. Uh, and a lot of women loved that work, still do. Evelyn's efficient nature didn't just apply to ranch work and chores. It applied to the clothes she wore. On trips into town, she received a reminder that her Western style was different from everyone else's. In the 1890s, Miles City, Montana was still a rough and tumble cow town with plenty of saloons for thirsty cowboys and the legendary McQueen House for wealthy visitors. Evelyn Cameron rode 48 miles to get there and it was hard to imagine she could cause a commotion. My divided skirt attracted much attention. So great at first was the prejudice against any divided garment in Montana that a warning was given to me to abstain from riding the streets of Mile City, lest I might be arrested. Although my costume was so full as to look like an ordinary walking dress when the wearer was on foot, it created a small sensation. I was much amused by the laughing, giggling girls <laughs> who stood staring at my costume as I walked about. Evelyn is an intensely practical woman. And besides, she really doesn't care what other people think.
We hope you're enjoying this special presentation of Evelyn Cameron, Pictures from a Worthy Life. Uh, that Evelyn's quite the rebel, as we saw in that last uh, segment. I'm John Twiggs, one of the program producers here at Montana PBS. And I'm Brianna McCabe. I'm a program producer here as well. Really enjoying the film tonight. We hope you are enjoying it at home as well. We want you to become a sustaining member with Montana PBS. And when you do, we've got some great thank you gifts to pass along. Show your support for Montana history by making a sustaining pledge of $5 per month or a one-time pledge of $60. And we'll say thank you with the book Evelyn Cameron's Montana, featuring postcards from the Frontier Photographer. With a donation of $72 or a sustaining pledge of $6 per month, we'll send you a DVD of tonight's program. Evelyn Cameron, Pictures from a Worthy Life. With a sustaining pledge of $12 per month or a one-time pledge of $144, you'll receive the biography, Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie, by Lorna Mill, as well as the Evelyn Cameron DVD. With your donation of $240 or a sustaining pledge of $20 per month, you get to choose between two combinations. First, it's the book Evelyn Cameron, Montana's Frontier Photographer by Christy Hager, and the DVD of tonight's program. Also at $240, you can receive both books for your home library, Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie, and Evelyn Cameron, Montana's Frontier Photographer. And for a sustaining pledge of $30 per month or a one-time pledge of $360, you'll receive the entire Evelyn Cameron package with two books, the postcard book, and the DVD of tonight's program. Thank you for your continued support of local history on Montana PBS. Well, like Evelyn Cameron, we are determined to capture Montana in new ways, celebrating all that makes it special, from the landscape to the lifestyle, and of course, the people. And while we love showcasing Evelyn's independent spirit, we here at Montana PBS are not as self-sufficient as she was. We need support from viewers like you. So now is the time to call. Your donation, no matter the amount, will go to sustain our storytelling of inspiring true stories like this one. Bree, we love getting the phone calls. We love hearing from folks. And of course, tonight we're expecting to hear uh, maybe a little bit more from Eastern Montana since they are prominently featured in the documentary. So Miles City, Glendive, Terry, all those areas that we see Evelyn out riding her horse, capturing uh, through her lens. We're going to see a lot more of her photography coming up uh, in the next segment. So uh, we expect to hear from those folks tonight. Well, you understand the geography out in Eastern Montana <laughs> very well. You created this film and it's a beautiful one. It was fun to work on, and of course, it, I got off to a bit of a shaky start, really. We were first introduced to Evelyn Cameron through the back roads of Montana. We did a segment uh, on uh, Evelyn and the gallery uh, in Terry, and at the time, we thought, oh, this is going to be a fantastic documentary or a program, and then come to find out the, the rights to the source material and the story had been signed away uh, to a Hollywood film company. They were going to make a big feature film, so we thought, well, th that's no good for us, so we'll wait for that to come out. And then four or five years went by, nothing happened, and I thought, I'm going to pick up the phone and called Donna Lucy who wrote the original biography of Evelyn Cameron and I called Donna and I said what's the scoop on this and she told me that uh, that had all fallen through that the rights were now available and so we jumped on it and uh, started the process and through some great partnerships with folks in eastern Montana and the Montana Historical Society able to pull it all together and the documentary they're watching tonight. Well, great persistence on your part, John. It's, it's worth it. It's a film we're really enjoying, and we couldn't do it without viewers like you. So please call, pledge your support, and we'll continue to make programs just like this one. Show your support for Montana history by making a sustaining pledge of $5 per month or a one-time pledge of $60, and we'll say thank you with the book Evelyn Cameron's Montana, featuring postcards from the Frontier Photographer. With a donation of $72 or a sustaining pledge of $6 per month, we'll send you a DVD of tonight's program, Evelyn Cameron, Pictures from a Worthy Life. With a sustaining pledge of $12 per month or a one-time pledge of $144, you'll receive the biography, Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie, by Lorna Mill, as well as the Evelyn Cameron DVD. With your donation of $240 or a sustaining pledge of $20 per month, you get to choose between two combinations. First, it's the book Evelyn Cameron, Montana's Frontier Photographer by Christy Hager and the DVD of tonight's program. Also at $240, you can receive both books for your home library, Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie and Evelyn Cameron, Montana's Frontier Photographer. And for a sustaining pledge of $30 per month or a one-time pledge of $360, you'll receive the entire Evelyn Cameron package with two books, the postcard book and the DVD of tonight's program. Thank you for your continued support of local history on Montana PBS. 
Well, John, we know the sense of community that really comes out in eastern Montana. What was their reaction to this film? Well, from the beginning, they were excited, and they told us right when we started shooting, we're going to have a premiere, we're going to have a screening for this, and we're going to do it in town. And sure enough, they did. This is some footage from this. Uh, this is 2005. Great gathering in Mern Park. It was a beautiful summer day and got together. They had a whole series of events, an art auction. Uh, they had uh, hiking tours, uh, open houses, that kind of thing. And they even invited the governor and Governor Brian Schweitzer came out and made the official proclamation that on state maps and state signage, Evelyn Cameron's home designated as Terry, Montana. And then after that, we all piled into the gymnasium there. And again, for a town that uh, at the time had a population of uh, maybe about 500, uh, we got a great crowd uh, in the Ray Frank Gymnasium and a chance to sit back. And it was fun to hear people's reaction and uh, get their feedback on it as uh, we screened the documentary that first time. It was a fun premiere. And then, of course, a fascinating footnote to that uh, and a testament to the great job that they did. It was the 2005 Montana Tourism Event of the Year. Uh, the folks from Prairie County went over to accept that. So we were very excited. It was just a great event and a great time. It's excellent. It's nice when you can see that people are excited about your work. We hope that we can hear from you tonight. If you pick up the phone, tell us that you're excited about the kind of quality programs that we produce at Montana PBS. And if you do, you'll get one of these great thank you gifts. Show your support for Montana history by making a sustaining pledge of $5 per month or a one-time pledge of $60. And we'll say thank you with the book, Evelyn Cameron's Montana, featuring postcards from the Frontier Photographer. With a donation of $72 or a sustaining pledge of $6 per month, we'll send you a DVD of tonight's program, Evelyn Cameron, Pictures from a Worthy Life. With a sustaining pledge of $12 per month or a one-time pledge of $144, you'll receive the biography, Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie, by Lorna Mill, as well as the Evelyn Cameron DVD. With your donation of $240 or a sustaining pledge of $20 per month, you get to choose between two combinations. First, it's the book Evelyn Cameron, Montana's Frontier Photographer by Christy Hager and the DVD of tonight's program. Also at $240, you can receive both books for your home library, Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie and Evelyn Cameron, Montana's Frontier Photographer. And for a sustaining pledge of $30 per month or a one-time pledge of $360, you'll receive the entire Evelyn Cameron package with two books, the postcard book, and the DVD of tonight's program. Thank you for your continued support of local history on Montana PBS. John, I imagine it must have been pretty daunting taking on telling a visual story of a visual storyteller who had these incredible photographs. You had to really honor that skill set that she had. Yes, the pressure was on, so we had to live up to that, but you can't go wrong with the Eastern Montana landscape. And, and again, this is where the collaboration came into play because as you see the beautiful Badlands there, uh, uh, a lot of the folks in the area were able to take us to these amazing locations, these beautiful spots so that we could capture that. Uh, this was in the early 2000s, so we had just stepped into new technology, high definition, widescreen, and we thought, what better landscape than this, uh, these uh, endless horizons. The very thing that really captivated and motivated uh, Evelyn Cameron, uh, we wanted to bring that to life with some of our photography to complement her photography. and. Uh, Again, a wonderful project, and we're going to see that now coming up in the next segment uh, as we're going to really delve into Evelyn's photography, her skills, all the things that she had to endure and uh, work with to make this happen. So uh, really look forward to this next segment. Absolutely. I think Evelyn would be proud. <laughs> we'll look forward to looking at this next segment. Thanks so much. Evelyn's active mind wasn't always focused on ranch work and chores. She was a voracious reader. I feel I must read and improve intellectually, but there are so few books on the ranch to read. She was forever curious. She loved puzzles and games and even wrote down the rules of poker. Now this is Cameron. The way this thing when one of her boarders brought out an old glass plate camera, it piqued Evelyn's interest. Exactly how do you focus this camera? Is it controlled from the side? She also looked into an easier option for her photography. In 1888, Kodak had introduced their snapshot camera. Small and lightweight, it eliminated the messy and time-consuming process of developing and printing negatives. As the advertisements exclaimed, you press the button, we do the rest. Evelyn's dilemma? Go for the convenience of the newer model or stay with the older process. She loved the control she had in the field with the older camera.
and the glass plate developing process suited her artistic eye. She chose the older method. With a Kodak camera, you would shoot a whole roll of film before you knew how your experiments turned out. Uh, but by going with the older process, Evelyn Cameron was able to try new things and to learn rather immediately how successful her experiments were. So for someone like her, who lived quite a long distance from a big post office, much less the manufacturing centers that would develop the film, that she really made a practical and strategic choice, I think. It was not, however, a convenient choice. It sometimes took weeks, even months, to get supplies, and the prairie was not glass plate friendly. The extreme sunlight, dirt and dust, challenged the most experienced photographer to create a clear image. I have lately taken up photography and work at it occasionally, after the household has retired to rest. It's very fascinating work, but requires a lot of practice. The detailed note-taking Evelyn used to run the ranch now worked perfectly in her new pursuit. She started by listing technical information with each photograph, such as long exposure times for indoor pictures. She read any available book on the subject. However, it was Ewan's work that provided the first true test of her photography. It was their most treasured time together. Whether hunting or bird watching, the Cameron's wilderness trips provided the romance that first brought them to the West. If ranch work drove them apart, these journeys reunited them. Evelyn would bring her camera along to photograph the wildlife, while Ewan studied the behavior of birds and took notes. They hoped to be published in a major journal someday. It was a collaboration she loved. Our ornithological rambles were our greatest pleasure in life. Ornithological exploration in the Badlands derives a peculiar charm from their extraordinary geological features and their intense solitude. Ewan was tracking golden eagle nesting behaviors in eastern Montana. It was the first research of its kind in the area. While he observed the nest from below, Evelyn was determined to get a different view of the birds. Without a telephoto lens, she relied on stealth and guile to get close to the birds. The results of Evelyn's daring, patience, and gift with animals were stunning close-ups of birds. They were among the earliest photographs of Western American birds in their native habitat. The wildlife wasn't the only thing to capture Evelyn's attention. From the moment she arrived, the eastern Montana landscape mesmerized her. It provided overwhelming variation for a photographer. Limitless horizons. Weather-sculpted stone. of it unlike anything Evelyn had ever seen. And you kind of know the pictures that she would have liked to have taken when she first arrived in Montana of a landscape that would look appealing in English terms, I mean, with its balance of verticals and horizontals. And there's a constant dialogue going on in these pictures, a dialogue of interrogation. What does this mean? How does this look? Gosh, how shocked the people back home in England would be by this. She had an extraordinary eye for the incongruities of space and proportion. And I think that's what comes again and again out of her photographs. It's a sense of a collision between a certain kind of rather genteel English sensibility and the shock of the Montana landscape. I think it's fair to say in general that, that men who photographed the Western landscape during the 19th century focused on the landscape as an empty place, 
as, as a wilderness, as a place that you could regard from afar or perhaps march into and conquer. But Evelyn Cameron, like some of the other women who began photographing Western landscapes early in the 20th century, really thought of the landscape as a historical space, a space that was shaped by people, and a space that in turn shaped people's lives. To this point, Evelyn's photography was just a hobby. The main business remained the polo ponies, and business was not going well. Their financial picture looked bleak. Evelyn only received a small allowance of her family's money, and everything in Montana was more expensive than they anticipated. The Camerons were behind on their ranch payments. In the spring of 1897, Ewan decided it was time to sell the horses, and he would personally accompany them on the trip to England. The decision was disastrous. A marathon train trip took Ewan and the horses from Montana to New York. Next, it was a transatlantic steamer carrying them to England. When the ocean voyage ended, six of the 15 horses were dead, and the others were badly weakened. Ewan was stuck in England trying to salvage their business deal. He was beside himself. I mean, this was all of their money for years. They'd been, they'd been breeding these ponies for about four years, and suddenly, all of their money was gone. Evelyn was left to run the ranch and survive the Montana winter. Temperatures dropped to 40 below zero, but she continued her chores. We have the troubles of Arctic explorers out here, but none of the credit. Now, all she wanted was her husband's safe return. Nearly six months after he left with the polo ponies, Ewan returned to Montana. Evelyn was never really sure how Ewan paid off their back taxes, but he did. One thing she was sure of, the Cameron's days of breeding and selling horses were over. It was a moment of decision for the Camerons. Their business was a failure, and Evelyn's family was sending them less and less money. Their options, give up the ranch and return home to England, or stay in Montana and try to find a way to survive on the prairie. When Ewan came back, he said, forget it, let's just go back to England. We can live off of your family money. I, I, I've had enough, this place is, is too much. In the face of adversity, Ewan folded, basically, and Evelyn blossomed. Now it was Evelyn's time to lead she made the decision to turn her photography into a business. It would be her plan, not Ewan's, that determined the Cameron's success or failure. Here's where the ideology of the West helps her out. She is fiercely independent. And even though it's unusual for women to be fiercely independent, she's gonna do it anyway. Evelyn started her photography business with an office at the Terry Hotel. But after six weeks, she realized her local customers would not come to her. She decided to take her glass plates to the prairie. So Evelyn Cameron is unusual in the sense that she had to go out to find her clients. Uh, she didn't have a studio, a portrait studio at, her, studio at her home. Her photographs are essentially all made in the field. She put her glass plate negatives in her saddlebag, tied her tripod behind her saddle, and headed out to the prairie. She traversed the Badlands on her horse, with her camera draped across her shoulder. Ewan rarely went on these trips, so Evelyn took an unusual step for a woman. She traveled alone. She often rode for hours, even days, through the Montana wilderness to reach a remote ranch. My hip is bruised from the camera's pressure. My horse's rough jog was tiring. One of many small communities near the Cameron's ranch was the tiny town of Fallon. 
it presented Evelyn with a unique challenge found in the new American West. How do eight people manage to look like a town? <laughs> it's an insoluble problem, and the, and the picture poses it beautifully as a problem. She is arranging objects. I bet, for instance, in the Fallon landscape, she's, she made those people stand apart. I mean, she's framing it. She's casting it into particular images, which doesn't make it idle snapshots of the passing moment at all, but, but rather um, a pretty hard-headed, humorous, self-conscious arrangement of the life in which she found herself. Evelyn's arrangements weren't limited to people. As she prepared to take a photograph of her friend Jess Trafton, she discovered new subjects for her spectacular attention to detail. So you have that incredible sense of space and the small place that he has in that vast canvas. And, and then when you look at the sheep, they're all strung out right in front of him. And they're all looking at you. And how she got all of those sheep, hundreds of sheep, to look at her. And Jess later remembered her taking that image. And he said it took her hours to get the, the sheep in the exact position that she wanted. For the woman who persuaded prairie animals and coaxed cowboy characters, there was one subject almost too tough to handle. She referred to them as bothersome. If a child moved during an exposure, it would ruin the photo and Evelyn wouldn't get paid. When a rambunctious little brother kept moving during an exposure, it was up to Evelyn to get him to be still. It meant more time and aggravation, but business was business, and she reluctantly accepted requests for children's photographs. I'm over to Bright's. Her little baby is the ugliest creature I ever saw. Despite her annoyances, Evelyn would do everything she could to put the children at ease. Sometimes, a family pet would help. On other occasions, she entrusted a parent's touch. And of course, that father's hand is there to calm the child and steady the child so he won't move during an exposure of several seconds. But there's something so tender about his hand and something so striking about uh, that workman's hand against that pale white skin of the child. In pictures like this, we're reminded of what it took to make a photograph. Um, that she had to set up these things, that she had to ask people to pause and to stop and to be still and to engage in a very direct way with her for just a moment. She had a connection, and you can actually see it in the images because you can tell that the people knew her. I mean, there's, a, there's an intimacy of, of her subjects to her, and you get the feeling that they knew her and trusted her. Even though most of these images were carefully composed, they have the feeling of spontaneity. During the long rides to family ranches, Evelyn came across more potential clients, the workers of the prairie. They lived a life so different from her English childhood that it drove her curiosity. How to shear a sheep, How to drive a herd of cattle across the Yellowstone River. She loved to figure out what people were doing and how they did it. And, and, and the people, of course, thought she was crazy. Coming out, she would go out into the outback looking for wolfers and sheep herders. And then she would arrive with this rather aristocratic English accent. And they thought she was mad, you know, coming out of nowhere, you know, across this empty prairie. The locals weren't quite sure what to make of Evelyn as she actively pursued new customers. People, a lot of people didn't like her because they thought that she was a little bit arrogant. She could be brusque with people. She wasn't the sort of person that would chit-chat and, and make small talk. And she would cut right to the chase. And that didn't endear her to everybody. But Evelyn's photography could cut through the personality differences. 
Whether out on the prairie or back in a small Montana town, when Evelyn and her camera arrived, it was a special occasion. There's a sense in a lot of these photographs of the photograph as an event. The women holding the American flag at a picnic. Again, you have the sense that, that they know they can dress a certain way, they can grab this flag, they can flank themselves in a beautiful formation there for Evelyn Cameron and create an event. And I feel that too in the pictures of, of the cowboys or the sheep herders. These people have the sense that they are participating in the creation of something special. And for those of us whose lives are documented ad nauseum every day by Snapchat cameras or video cameras or surveillance cameras, it's hard to remember that this could once be a special event. Evelyn still needed to get paid. She posted her prices at the local post office. She charged 25 cents a photograph, or $3 for a dozen. But her expensive glass plates and long traveling distances weren't helping the Cameron's financial troubles. Ewan posted photographic accounts and makes me $4 in the hole yet. Made $31, spent 35 If the Camerons were going to survive on the ranch, Evelyn needed more customers. In 1908, the Chicago-Milwaukee-St. Paul began laying track for another railroad line across Montana. It didn't take the immigrant work crews long to seek out Evelyn's photography service. I used to photograph them on Sundays when they would dress up regardless. It was very amusing when certain cliques were taken together. For if an outsider wished to join the group, it would create quite a wordy warfare with unrefined language. Fortunately, in Italian. <laughs> Evelyn's knowledge of three foreign languages served her well in the new American West. Her education helped her move easily from one ethnic group to another. Now her glass plates were turning into photo albums, so immigrants like her could share their Western experience with loved ones back home. I make up albums with two dozen photos in each, which sell for five dollars. A frequent remark from customers, I guess I'll buy one of them to send back east to my folks. And what an extraordinary thing this was. For the first time in history during the 19th century, you can emigrate across oceans, you can emigrate against continents, and you can create something to show your family that you're okay, and not just okay, that you've made it. Not only were railroad workers finding their way west, homesteading families were popping up on the prairie. In 1909, the Enlarged Homestead Act doubled the acreage of a standard plot to assist dry land farming. Remote towns saw a population increase. This part of Montana has now taken on a regular boom and is being rapidly settled up by dry farmers. The growth and size of the towns has to be seen to be believed. It was a mixed blessing for Evelyn. The new residents meant more photography customers. But the old Montana, open and wild, the Montana Evelyn fell in love with, that place was disappearing. The range country that you knew so well has now gone, and the prairie swarms with farmers who plow up the land with steam and gasoline engines. The only consolation we have is that they have not begun to plow the badlands, although someone may soon invent an effective contrivance for even this. I think she had an incredible sense of the importance of where she was and how she arrived when it was first a cowboy culture, and she was there at the moment when it turned into a homesteading culture. And she was acutely aware of the fact that the place was changing. Homesteaders, immigrants, cowboys, and ranchers, all captured on Evelyn's glass plates. But her greatest joy came when she turned the camera to her fellow women pioneers. The female members of the Russian Germans, who have swarmed over the prairie like ants, take outdoor work even more seriously than the cowgirls whom they replace. 
Russian-German girls in their teens successfully perform every kind of farm labour and may be seen ploughing from daylight to dark. She found it fascinating that women were doing such hard work out there and enjoying it. And these faces of the women that she photographed were not the browbeaten pioneer women of stereotype. These women really enjoyed it out there. They liked it as much as she did. The most natural thing in the world was to think only about women who were reluctant pioneers. I do think there were women who were reluctant, but there were a lot more who felt just the way Evelyn Cameron did, who were delighted in the novelty and the, the sense of a new start and, and the freedom and informality of the West. But stereotypes are hard to get rid of. So every time we discover an adventurous woman, Somebody always says, oh gosh, how exceptional she is. And maybe she is, and maybe she isn't. And it's wonderful to have visual documents of what these women looked like. Um, I think it's less the women that are rare than photographs of the women that are rare. To educate women in her family, Evelyn turned the lens on herself. She took self-portraits to send back to her nieces in England, showing the routine of frontier life. I think in Cameron's self-portraits, you do get a sense of a person who's incredibly self-confident, adventuresome, tough, but also a woman who has somehow an incredible sense of fun. And I do think that comes through in her photographs. I always have the feeling looking at her pictures that whoever is making this picture is just having the time of her life out there, meeting these people, trying to please them, um, and seeing what she can make come out of a glass negative. One of the greatest parts of her work is that you can sense her sheer joy out there. I mean, there's a wonderful portrait of her, self-portrait, where she's holding in one hand a sparrowhawk and feeding it with the other with a grasshopper. And she has this sort of goofy grin. And then you can sort of get this feel, this kind of giddy love of the West and the wildness. And, and her cuff is undone. And the only thing that indicates what kind of life she came from is that she has this silver belt buckle that's actually made of beautiful English silver. It was another reminder that Evelyn's upbringing was different from her fellow pioneers. She had a different education, different interests, and at times, she felt she had very little in common with her neighbors. It showed in her photographs. A discernible distance between the photographer and her subject. You feel that the intrusion of the camera and the person, the photographer, on the landscape is quite deliberately registered in the shot. And it's a measure of the distance between the photographer and the landscape that she's taking the photograph of. There's always a sense that I'm a stranger here. One foot in the community, but one, one foot outside of it as she was chronicling it. I mean, she had that outsider's view always. Because she was a very solitary person, too. She really didn't get that close to anybody else. We hope you're enjoying this special presentation of Evelyn Cameron, Pictures from a Worthy Life. It is fascinating to delve into her photographic skills, which we did in that last segment. I'm John Twiggs, one of the program producers here at Montana PBS. And I'm Brianna McCabe. I'm a program producer here as well. Tonight, I'm a viewer like you enjoying this film. We hope you're enjoying it at home. We want you to become a sustaining member with Montana PBS. And when you do, we've got a variety of thank you gifts to pass along. Show your support for Montana history by making a sustaining pledge of $5 per month or a one-time pledge of $60. And we'll say thank you with the book Evelyn Cameron's Montana, featuring postcards from the Frontier Photographer. With a donation of $72 or a sustaining pledge of $6 per month, we'll send you a DVD of tonight's program, Evelyn Cameron, Pictures from a Worthy Life. 
With a sustaining pledge of $12 per month or a one-time pledge of $144, you'll receive the biography, Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie, by Lorna Mill, as well as the Evelyn Cameron DVD. With your donation of $240 or a sustaining pledge of $20 per month, you get to choose between two combinations. First, it's the book Evelyn Cameron, Montana's Frontier Photographer by Christy Hager, and the DVD of tonight's program. Also at $240, you can receive both books for your home library, Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie, and Evelyn Cameron, Montana's Frontier Photographer. And for a sustaining pledge of $30 per month or a one-time pledge of $360, you'll receive the entire Evelyn Cameron package with two books, the postcard book, and the DVD of tonight's program. Thank you for your continued support of local history on Montana PBS. We want you to become a sustaining member with Montana PBS. Take advantage of all these great thank you gifts. You've got lots of options there. And, you know, it's a privilege for us to be able to share pieces of Montana history with you, lesser known pieces of Montana history, whether that's an interesting person like Evelyn Cameron or a little known event like the Kenyon Connell explosion in Butte or the amazing young women of the 1904 Fort Shaw Indian Boarding School girls basketball team. It's Montana history on Montana PBS, but that only happens with your financial support support. Become a sustaining member right now. It's quick, it's easy. You can give us a phone call or you can jump online at montanapbs.org. We very much appreciate it and thank you. John, we know that people at home are so vital to productions like this and all productions of this magnitude really are a collaboration. So I'd love to hear who else you worked with to make it possible. Well, a big one, of course, was Donna Lucy. Uh, like I said, she was the original uh, author of the first biography of Evelyn Cameron. And to work with her, uh, she had poured through the diaries, the photos. Uh, she got to meet Janet Williams. We're going to meet Janet Williams coming up in this next segment. Uh, so Donna was great to work with, and in a lot of ways, I felt like I was working with Evelyn Cameron. Like, she was truly an inspiration. Her attention to detail, it was just legendary to be able to look at the notes she would take with her photography. Uh, I knew we had to really step up our game because uh, we needed to represent Eastern Montana in much the way that she did. So I, I felt like I was working with her as we were going along in the process. You really tied it all together very nicely. And then, of course, the, there's the element of the, the live reenactments as well. That was something new for us, something we hadn't done in terms of just uh, costumes and locations and the people, and that was another great collaboration. Karen Stevenson, she was the embodiment of Evelyn Cameron in the documentary, and, and Karen, living in eastern Montana, studying uh, Evelyn Cameron, knew her so well, had a Chautauqua, had performed in the area, so uh, Karen was great, and she helped us so much uh, with the locations and everything else that we were working with, and uh, again, just lots of collaborations. We needed all of it in order to make it happen. And we do need your support at home. You're watching this because we know you value programs like this, and we need that support to continue to produce them. So call us right now, and we'll give you one of these great thank you gifts. Show your support for Montana history by making a sustaining pledge of $5 per month or a one-time pledge of $60. And we'll say thank you with the book Evelyn Cameron's Montana, featuring postcards from the Frontier Photographer. With a donation of $72 or a sustaining pledge of $6 per month, we'll send you a DVD of tonight's program, Evelyn Cameron, Pictures from a Worthy Life. With a sustaining pledge of $12 per month or a one-time pledge of $144, you'll receive the biography, Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie, by Lorna Mill, as well as the Evelyn Cameron DVD. With your donation of $240 or a sustaining pledge of $20 per month, you get to choose between two combinations. First, it's the book Evelyn Cameron, Montana's Frontier Photographer by Christy Hager and the DVD of tonight's program. Also at $240, you can receive both books for your home library, Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie and Evelyn Cameron, Montana's Frontier Photographer. And for a sustaining pledge of $30 per month or a one-time pledge of $360, you'll receive the entire Evelyn Cameron package with two books, the postcard book and the DVD of tonight's program. Thank you for your continued support of local history on Montana PBS. And I know one benefit of getting the complete package and becoming a sustainer is that you get to see some some extras, some of the making of this film That's in right, the DVD. Some bonus features on there, yes. And behind the scenes, we were fortunate. To, we we're talking about collaborating. The the person who was the embodiment of you and Cameron was Bart Freeze uh, from Mile City, and uh, he was shot some of this behind the scenes footage there. That's me following Karen around on the natural bridge there, and. 
getting some shots down below. We were trying to get all these angles. And again, it was just being able to find this location. This was along the Calypso Trail uh, in the Badlands there near Terry and uh, having folks haul us around. A lot of time spent in the pickup truck there as we were wandering around. And another location that we had talked about was trying to find a beautiful golden eagle nest. And Pat O'Neill told us, well, I think I found a spot over there. And as you can see, there's this gorgeous red rocks there. And uh, of course, we're hauling the equipment up and down. And we had to speed it up, or otherwise we'd be here for another half an hour <laughs> watching uh, Ray and I lug it up and down uh, there. But eventually the light, it went from cloudy and overcast and windy. And then right before sunset, the wow. sun pops out and you can see the colors really pop there in that nest. And uh, uh, fortunately, no one fell off the cliff during the making of this. So uh, no one was harmed as uh, Karen was uh, brave there <laughs> to, to come out for the shot that we needed. So again, it was just great fun to go out, explore. You felt like you were an explorer going to these uh, places that not a lot of people see. Um, and that's what I've always said about eastern Montana. It's gorgeous scenery. You just have to work for it a little bit. So it's not right there. You got to get back in there and uh, feel fortunate that we got to go to all those spots. How did that vintage clothing hold up in the heat? <laughs> it, it worked pretty well. You know, they always say wool is breathable and uh, it's actually true. So uh, for Karen, for Bart, they didn't pass out because we were out there in the summer heat and uh, they were able to hold up. So it is true. Well, it's special to see the behind the scenes uh, elements, and that's something that you can see when you pledge your support right now is one of the great thank you gifts we have to offer. Show your support for Montana history by making a sustaining pledge of $5 per month or a one-time pledge of $60, and we'll say thank you with the book Evelyn Cameron's Montana, featuring postcards from the Frontier Photographer. With a donation of $72 or a sustaining pledge of $6 per month, we'll send you a DVD of tonight's program. Evelyn Cameron, Pictures from a Worthy Life. With a sustaining pledge of $12 per month or a one-time pledge of $144, you'll receive the biography, Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie, by Lorna Mill, as well as the Evelyn Cameron DVD. With your donation of $240 or a sustaining pledge of $20 per month, you get to choose between two combinations. First, it's the book Evelyn Cameron, Montana's Frontier Photographer by Christy Hager, and the DVD of tonight's program. Also at $240, you can receive both books for your home library, Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie, and Evelyn Cameron, Montana's Frontier Photographer. And for a sustaining pledge of $30 per month or a one-time pledge of $360, you'll receive the entire Evelyn Cameron package with two books, the postcard book, and the DVD of tonight's program. Thank you for your continued support of local history on Montana PBS. John, Evelyn did such a nice job of really preserving her own story through these diaries, these images, and it gave you a wealth of opportunity to tell a true story. Yeah, she, she made it easy on us, really, from, from that standpoint. And, and we talked to several historians during the making of this, and that really is what they were blown away by uh, the most, was the fact that it was a complete set of diaries. Uh, you know, Donna Lucy thought maybe there was one diary as she was beginning to write uh, the initial book, but to come to find out that you have this uh, complete set of uh, 35 years, it's, it's a documentation of life during that time period that is really unparalleled. You couple that with the photographs, uh, it, it's amazing. And that's why you really felt like Evelyn was uh, a co-author, Evelyn was a co-producer uh, on the program because uh, so much you got so much detail from her that you really got a sense of what life was like. And, and of course, as we talked about in the documentary, uh, it's great because she had the outsider's view. She was just fascinated by all these things where maybe if you grew up there, you took it for granted. So we're gonna learn a little bit more about that where you got the conclusion coming up, the, the last part of Evelyn's story. It's, uh, it's gonna be great fun. It's, it's a treasure and it's really neat to see her legacy playing out tonight. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll look forward to seeing the rest of the film. Evelyn's most trying relationship was with Ewan. He was frequently in poor health and the doctors could not diagnose his condition. He was becoming more distant and it was taking its toll on Evelyn. She arose early one morning to milk the cow and prepare the cream for Ewan's breakfast. When he arrived, he didn't find the cream to his liking. Ewan took a fly out of the cream and threw it on the boards. Don't throw cream on the boards. Don't Spray tell me what to do. I will not oh. I told him I didn't like cream thrown on the boards, and he became mad with rage and flew outside. I will not be treated in this manner. Later, I went to try and appease his wrath. 
This made him worse. What the hell do you think you're doing? And he cursed me because I cried. I felt mighty bad, and in my solitude poured forth my heartache. Evelyn and Ewan had a very difficult relationship, to say the least. I mean, he was, he was a very difficult character. He was very cranky. She would write in her diary all the time, Ewan VT, which meant very tempered. And most days, he was VT. No matter how frustrating things got with Ewan, Evelyn could always find comfort in the solitude of the prairie. When Evelyn first arrived in Montana, she wrote in her diary of a desire to have a child. Now, almost 20 years later, the chances of her sharing her experiences with the next generation seemed remote. That changed in 1908 when a family from Minneapolis decided to try their hand at farming in eastern Montana. 24-year-old Janet Williams didn't know what to expect out west. The city girl packed her possessions, including her piano, and headed for the new homestead. She loved music and, and cultural things and books. She could quote Shakespeare by the hour, but she did love the farms and she loved the people. Her father, when he first saw the area, he thought it was wonderful. It was so nice and flat out there, and he wanted to be a farmer, too. Shortly after they moved, the Williams family met their neighbors, a British couple with aristocratic accents. The Camerons and the Williams hit it off immediately, but Evelyn and Janet forged the closest friendship. It began with music. Evelyn would bring sheet music composed by her mother to the Williams farm and ask Janet to play it on her prized piano. Jenny played to us on the piano. There were duets also. They played mum's pieces. I photographed Jenny at the piano twice. Ewan was astounded she could play so well. The diaries completely change tone when Janet arrives. And you can just sense her joy that this, is, this has been the biggest event in her whole life for Janet to arrive. She's such a dear girl. We both love her deeply. Janet was eager to learn everything about living the Western life. And she had the perfect person to teach her. Evelyn showed Janet how to raise a garden, how to brand cattle, and most importantly, how to ride a horse. Evelyn even bought her a pony that they named Zip. She's being able to teach someone. She's, she's mentoring this young person who's coming in, and now she is the old timer there. Before, she had come in 1889 as the young bride who didn't know how to do anything, and she had to look to the other pioneer women to help her. And now she was helping yet another generation. These were fun times for Evelyn. Her photography business was growing, and Janet was helping with the photos. Now, when Evelyn took a self-portrait, Janet would click the shutter. The rest of the world was starting to see Evelyn's work. Her wildlife photos were published in the Auk, one of the most respected ornithological journals in the country. Her pictures of birds and nests in eastern Montana appeared alongside Ewan's articles about golden eagles. Evelyn's Western experience reached Europe when she photographed and wrote an article for England's Country Life magazine. She used her neighbors, the Buckley sisters, to educate Britons about the cowgirl in Montana. The cowboy is a household word all the world over. The cowgirl, to British ears, suggests little, except perhaps a dairymaid. Nevertheless, for some 20 years past, there have been cowgirls on Western ranches who are the feminine counterpart of cowboys, riding in similar saddles on similar horses.
Evelyn's Western life seemed as limitless as the horizons she photographed. She was running the photography business. She was running the ranch. But there was one part of her life Evelyn couldn't control. Evelyn kept a small book of scrap paper to write down proverbs and sayings. She used them for inspiration. Disease is less than mind, and mind can control it. It was 1915. Ewan was dying, and Evelyn was powerless to stop it. The doctor still couldn't diagnose his condition, but she refused to give up and promised to take him west to find a cure. Before they headed out, she gathered all of Ewan's work, the years of ornithology notes, and his incredibly rare trumpeter swan specimen. She put Ewan in the middle of it and took his picture. Ewan, the dying husband, becomes part of an extraordinary still life. I mean, it's a piece of theater, photographed theater. And I think that's a characteristic of a great deal of her work. Shows this almost totalitarian feel for the image, that the photographer is in control When Evelyn took Ewan out to California, she had no idea of the troubles she would face. Evelyn hoped what she believed to be the curative powers of the ocean would help Ewan's health, but his condition only worsened, and she had to move him to a sanitarium. Evelyn and Ewan faithfully wrote letters to Janet Williams, updating the situation. Ewan's condition is pitiful. He's so weak that he cannot turn over in bed without my assistance. I'm trying to get a cook, as Ewan cannot bear me out of his sight. The nurse specialist, Dr. Brainard, remarked her outdoor work and gardening has stood her in good stead now that she has to lift me around. I am entirely dependent on her. Ewan's health was not Evelyn's only crisis. Her next problem stretched back to Montana. The Camerons had claimed their land through the Homestead Act, and they had met all the legal requirements except one. Ewan had to become a naturalized citizen. The U.S. Land Office wrote to say, if Ewan didn't appear in person at the office, the Camerons would lose their rights to the homestead. Evelyn would try to save the ranch again, this time from Ewan's bedside in California. She turned to the most influential person they knew. Dear Dr. Merriam, I am writing to ask you to do my husband a good She wrote a letter to C. Hart Merriam, a renowned scientist at the Smithsonian Institute, who was familiar with the Cameron's ornithology work. Sincerely yours, Mrs. Evelyn J. Cameron. One week later, Evelyn received a telegram. Dear Mr. E. S. She read the news aloud to Ewan. To inform you that your request has been accepted. Dr. Merriam had interceded on their behalf. The ranch was saved. A few days later, on a cool afternoon in May, Ewan died. I was with him, alone at the last. Poor old boy. It was a blessed relief. So you have this sense that despite the difficulties that they've been through and despite the ups and downs, there is this great core of respect and love between the two of them and certainly loyalty and commitment and, and to a very poignant degree. The autopsy revealed Ewan died from cancer of the liver and cancer of the brain. Far from their beloved ranch, Evelyn made arrangements to bury him in California. Now, she faced one final decision. Evelyn's family begged her to return to England. They told her there would be no one to help with the ranch, and she should not live alone. Evelyn decided to return home. She 
she arrived in Montana only to discover that while she was tending to Ewan, the ranch had been robbed. All the trinkets except my brother's locket are gone. I felt bad. Oh well, what's it matter? Evelyn went outside and plowed her garden. Evelyn was truly on her own. She continued to do all the chores on the ranch because she didn't want to use hired help. Janet Williams had moved from her family's farm into town and started giving music lessons. But there was still the memory of Ewan. It was almost a year after his death that Evelyn took a stack of his old letters and burned them in the stove. She then put on the Victrola and danced alone. And this is what she did for the rest of her life. For 15 years, she danced alone on that ranch and ran it all by herself with no electricity, no running water, no car, at a time when she could have had all of those things. So I think that she went beyond his death and found something more. And, and basically, it was the kind of love of the West and love of hard work. And this is what she found were the great tonics in her life. I think living alone is very agreeable. No dissension, no annoyances from others. I do like being alone. I was thinking of all past miseries are being repaid by present contentment. Evelyn celebrated another milestone of her independence on April 9th, 1918, when she officially became a United States citizen. During the 1920s, Evelyn rarely traveled to photograph, instead taking pictures of friends who visited the ranch. She continued to dutifully write in her diary each day, unknowingly completing the last pieces of her legacy. When you look at a run of diaries over years, and you have these very daily diaries, you see patterns that you'll never see any other way. So that's a big gift, to have a run of diaries like this about the life of one particular woman is pretty unusual. Along with her writings were the glass plates filled with images. They showed a landscape of promise. They showed faces of pride. They showed faces of hope. Images enduring well beyond the stories that launched them. I think one of the wonderful things about historical photographs is that they are often cast into the world with one set of stories attached to them. In Evelyn Cameron's case, the story might have been, look at our new house, look how prosperous we are, come visit us in eastern Montana. But as time passes, the photograph is still there, and sometimes that story has fallen away. And what makes photographs engaging is the possibility that we can come to them with stories of our own and attach new stories to them. They're not always historically accurate stories, but they can be compelling stories. And it's wonderful, I think, that photographs can serve so many different interests, even if they're not Evelyn Cameron's original intent. In December 1928, Evelyn was experiencing such pain that she packed her bag for the nearest hospital 30 miles away. She sensed this could be serious and feared no one would take care of the ranch or the animals. She took her favorite horse, Zip, the one she had given to Janet Williams 20 years earlier, led him out back and put him down. She entered the hospital for a routine appendectomy, but following the operation on December 26th, Evelyn Cameron died of heart failure. 
I think of death as a delightful journey that I shall take when all my tasks are done. Evelyn left all her possessions to her friend, Janet Williams. The glass plates, the diaries, everything remained in Janet's basement for more than 50 years before they were rediscovered. Ultimately, they told the story of a woman who fulfilled her one simple goal. To make an interesting, worthwhile life, something that you could look back upon proudly. What I find so thrilling about her is the sense of peace that she found out there, that she really did, particularly by the end of her life, was totally content. And I think it's a kind of contentment that, that people yearn for everyone in any generation. And I think that, to me, that's what makes her endlessly fascinating and someone people should aspire towards. We hope you're enjoying this special presentation of Evelyn Cameron, pictures from a worthy life. It truly was a worthy life indeed, as we see here at the very end. And I'm John Twiggs, one of the program producers here at Montana PBS. And I'm Brianna McCabe. I'm a program producer as well. I liked that you tied in the title from her story herself, her diary. Yes, it was a great project to work on. We hope you've been enjoying it. We want to hear from you. We want you to become a sustaining member with Montana PBS. When you do, we've got some great thank you gifts to pass along. Show your support for Montana history by making a sustaining pledge of $5 per month or a one-time pledge of $60, and we'll say thank you with the book Evelyn Cameron's Montana, featuring postcards from the Frontier Photographer. With a donation of $72 or a sustaining pledge of $6 per month, we'll send you a DVD of tonight's program, Evelyn Cameron, Pictures from a Worthy Life. With a sustaining pledge of $12 per month or a one-time pledge of $144, you'll receive the biography, Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie, by Lorna Mill, as well as the Evelyn Cameron DVD. With your donation of $240 or a sustaining pledge of $20 per month, you get to choose between two combinations. First, it's the book Evelyn Cameron, Montana's Frontier Photographer by Christy Hager, and the DVD of tonight's program. Also at $240, you can receive both books for your home library, Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie, and Evelyn Cameron, Montana's Frontier Photographer. And for a sustaining pledge of $30 per month or a one-time pledge of $360, you'll receive the entire Evelyn Cameron package with two books, the postcard book, and the DVD of tonight's program. Thank you for your continued support of local history on Montana PBS. Here at Montana PBS, we love sharing stories that capture the essence of Montana, and we know you turn to us because you see the value in these stories that go beyond surface level understanding. We want you to get to know people like Evelyn Cameron, but we can't do it without your support. You are the driving force that allows us to tell stories that deepen our understanding of the world. So we urge you, if you haven't called already to pledge your support, do it now. We really appreciate it. Bree, we've been hearing from folks all across the state. They've been taking advantage from the variety of choices that they have. Uh, I'm loving these postcards from the Montana Historical Society. But again, it's great to hear from everybody uh, knowing that they appreciate Montana history on Montana PBS. It's, it's wonderful to see. And I know that people beyond Montana have really linked on to Evelyn Cameron's story. It has resonated really around the country and, and we we're very proud of that. Of course, our number one priority is, is Montana, but then after that, uh, it, when we have an opportunity to share it with the rest of the country, we do that and we, and we were able to do that with Evelyn's story. And uh, I would get emails from people in Boston and Chicago, Los Angeles. Uh, there were some professors at the university, at Arizona State University that wanted to use the documentary. They were teaching a class on photography and they wanted their students to appreciate how difficult it was in the origins of photography and the attention to detail you needed to have and no better example than Evelyn Cameron uh, for that. So it's been very rewarding to hear from all around the country, people really appreciating Evelyn's story and appreciating the beauty of Eastern Montana, the uniqueness of Eastern Montana. So uh, we're very happy we got to share it. Yeah, her legacy really resonates. And our legacy here at Montana PBS, we hope resonates with you. We want to continue to tell these types of stories, but we just can't do it without your support. So call us now. We have some great thank you gifts to send your way. Show your support for Montana history by making a sustaining pledge of $5 per month or a one-time pledge of $60, and we'll say thank you with the book Evelyn Cameron's Montana, featuring postcards from the Frontier Photographer. 
With a donation of $72 or a sustaining pledge of $6 per month, we'll send you a DVD of tonight's program, Evelyn Cameron, Pictures from a Worthy Life. With a sustaining pledge of $12 per month or a one-time pledge of $144, you'll receive the biography, Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie, by Lorna Mill, as well as the Evelyn Cameron DVD. With your donation of $240 or a sustaining pledge of $20 per month, you get to choose between two combinations. First, it's the book Evelyn Cameron, Montana's Frontier Photographer by Christy Hager, and the DVD of tonight's program. Also at $240, you can receive both books for your home library, Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie, and Evelyn Cameron, Montana's Frontier Photographer. And for a sustaining pledge of $30 per month or a one-time pledge of $360, you'll receive the entire Evelyn Cameron package with two books, the postcard book, and the DVD of tonight's program. Thank you for your continued support of local history on Montana PBS. It's really a great selection of gifts that you can get. And I know one of the DVD extras that is interests me is you get to see how it all came together. Yes, and, and the, the true origin story, this is re really before we got involved with it, and that was the fact that Donna Lucy, who uh, wrote the original biography, got to meet Janet Williams, and we just saw Janet in the, in the final segment of the show, and uh, so we got a chance to, to be there with Donna Lucy in Janet's house, this was before the premiere, uh, to hear a little bit more of the backstory of how that all came together, and here's a little clip of that right now. The story of Evelyn Cameron's photography collection resumed in 1979. 51 years after Cameron's death, Donna Lucy was a photo editor at Time Life Books and had seen a small sampling of Cameron's work. She knew there was more and traveled from New York to Montana to follow a lead on the collection. She believed it was in this house in eastern Montana. The house belonged to Janet Williams, Evelyn's best friend and the one who inherited all of Evelyn's possessions. In 1979, Janet was 95 years old but she wasn't quite ready to show Donna the Cameron collection that had been sitting in her basement for more than 50 years. And she knew that it was a remarkable collection, but I don't think she, she even knew how important it was. I think she thought that it was important for Montana, but it's much more than just a Montana collection. This really is a priceless collection for the American West and for American photography. Oh, I want to know what happened after that. <laughs> there is more to the story, of course. Uh, she eventually had uh, Janet's trust and, and got to go down into the basement. At that point, Janet, 95, wasn't able to go down into the basement. She hovered at the top of the steps and was helping Donna and pointing her around there. And of course, it was just a, an unbelievable treasure trove. At that point, Donna thought there were going to be some glass plate negatives and maybe one diary. And of course, there were all the, there were guns and saddlebags and all this camera equipment and then of course uh, 35 years worth of diaries. It was, it was pretty incredible and uh, hear Donna tell that you knew that uh, it was something very, very special. Well, just think of if this hadn't been discovered, you know, and I wonder how many other basements have these historical stories <laughs> waiting to be uncovered. You know, we need support from viewers like you to be able to dig into the basements of Montana <laughs> and bring these stories to life. Show your support for Montana history by making a sustaining pledge of $5 per month or a one-time pledge of $60, and we'll say thank you with the book Evelyn Cameron's Montana, featuring postcards from the Frontier Photographer. With a donation of $72 or a sustaining pledge of $6 per month, we'll send you a DVD of tonight's program, Evelyn Cameron, Pictures from a Worthy Life. With a sustaining pledge of $12 per month or a one-time pledge of $144, you'll receive the biography, Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie, by Lorna Mill, as well as the Evelyn Cameron DVD. With your donation of $240 or a sustaining pledge of $20 per month, you get to choose between two combinations. First, it's the book Evelyn Cameron, Montana's Frontier Photographer by Christy Hager, and the DVD of tonight's program. Also at $240, you can receive both books for your home library, Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie, and Evelyn Cameron, Montana's Frontier Photographer. And for a sustaining pledge of $30 per month or a one-time pledge of $360, you'll receive the entire Evelyn Cameron package with two books, the postcard book, and the DVD of tonight's program. Thank you for your continued support of local history on Montana PBS. Thank you so much. We really appreciate the phone calls that are coming in tonight uh, showing that people do value this kind of quality programming. 
And it's important to hear from you tonight because, yes, we enjoy telling these Montana stories. It's a big part of what we do. It's, a, it's really a privilege to be able to do that and to be able to dig in and tell some of the lesser known stories. Uh, we, we take that seriously. We want to be able to do that. And in order to do that, we need to hear from you. We want your support. Let us know that you support Montana history on Montana PBS. And when you do, we've got plenty of premiums for you to choose from. Show your support for Montana history by making a sustaining pledge of $5 per month or a one-time pledge of $60, and we'll say thank you with the book Evelyn Cameron's Montana, featuring postcards from the Frontier Photographer. With a donation of $72 or a sustaining pledge of $6 per month, we'll send you a DVD of tonight's program, Evelyn Cameron, Pictures from a Worthy Life. With a sustaining pledge of $12 per month or a one-time pledge of $144, you'll receive the biography, Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie, by Lorna Mill, as well as the Evelyn Cameron DVD. With your donation of $240 or a sustaining pledge of $20 per month, you get to choose between two combinations. First, it's the book Evelyn Cameron, Montana's Frontier Photographer by Christy Hager, and the DVD of tonight's program. Also at $240, you can receive both books for your home library, Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie, and Evelyn Cameron, Montana's Frontier Photographer. And for a sustaining pledge of $30 per month or a one-time pledge of $360, you'll receive the entire Evelyn Cameron package with two books, the postcard book, and the DVD of tonight's program. Thank you for your continued support of local history on Montana PBS. You know, Evelyn's story is one that really is timeless and it's one that you want to hang around. You want these mementos on your coffee table to tell your guests and visitors about Evelyn Cameron. Pop in the DVD and, and show them a little bit of Montana history. That's right. And it means a lot to us that people trust us to tell those stories. And we look forward to telling lots of these stories in the future. We'll be able to do that with your support as we will continue to tell all the stories of talented Montanans all around the state. From all of us, once again, thank you for joining us and we appreciate your support. Production support for Evelyn Cameron was provided by Travel Montana, the Montana Cultural Trust, the Greater Montana Foundation, and the Montana Committee for the Humanities. We are PBS. Jeanette Rankin from Missoula, Montana, was the first woman elected to Congress. She was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in 1916 